Hey everyone, it's Bailey, and today I want to talk about my July favorites. Beauty, some lifestyle, peppered on in there, and I want to do it in the format of a tutorial, which is why we're starting bare face. So let's go ahead and get started. So first I'm actually going to start with skin prep, which I so rarely do. I just forget to talk about skincare in videos in general. And this month especially, I have finally found like the perfect cocktail that has suited my very dry skin, my newly dry skin. And it's really uh, been essential to getting the base that I have been loving. So first up, well, first up, let me prep my lips with the Sarah Hap Lip Slip. I have been going through both this as well as the nighttime sleep mask. I forget what it's called, but both of these, this is what I use when I prep my lips. I also throw it in literally any bag I am traveling with. And then the mask, it's like more opaque, has kind of a white cast to it. I use when I go to bed at night and that I am also really working my way through. Now, while that is soaking in, let's get into skin. Normally I spray a primer on my skin. I have already done that and I left it downstairs and I'm not going back for it because stairs are hard these days. So just know, I spray a primer. Uh, it's either BioElements Power Peptide or I believe, oh, what is his name? Mario Badescu's Glycolic Acid. I spray it, but it actually doesn't come in a spray bottle, but it's his glycolic acid toner. I use the glycolic acid at night and then the power peptide during the day. And that's just what I use to prime my skin, even out the pH. And then at, while my skin is still damp, I will apply the rest of my products, starting with BioElements Dulux. This is a facial oil and it has so helped with my dry skin. I've mentioned this before, you're probably sick of me talking about it. Pregnancy has really dried my skin out and I've really struggled with how to even it out, even in the summer. Like I've gone from combo acne prone skin to even in the hottest summer months down here in Texas, not being able to get enough moisture in my skin. Still acne prone though, so that's great. But I really, I really love the um, Sedoni Beauty C Serum. They have an amazing vitamin C serum and that used to do it for me but now it's not enough. So in looking at some alternatives, I made the switch or back to a bunch of BioElement stuff because I just, I know what works for me from them. So it's always just been easy for me to kind of go back to what I know. But what I hadn't tried from them was this Dulux. It is amazing. It says with occlusive argan, squalene, and sea kale for a dewy hydration. And it is very dewy. Would not recommend this to true combo and oily skin people unless you are really into a glow. So I tone, spritz a toner on, I put that on, and then I go in with my sunscreen and that I have been using BioElements Ray Defense. Actually, you can't see through that. I can see through this and I actually need to order some more. Um, it's an SPF 30 sunblock. And it's a pretty dewy finish, I will say. Even, I still liked it when I was a combo skin type, like I didn't find it was excessively dewy to the point of causing makeup meltdown. It just left a really healthy looking glow to my skin, but used in conjunction with the Dulux, it keeps my skin hydrated, soft, not flaky or textured throughout the day like it really had been before. So essentially, the combination of these two plus my toner have been my absolute saviors over the past month and a half. And they create the perfect base for the foundation that I have been loving, which has been the Lorac Pro Soft Focus Longwear Foundation. Mine is in the shade number seven light. And when I first talked about this, uh, I think in a video this month where I did a full, maybe it was two, I don't know, I'll link it, but it's a video where I talked about a bunch of uh, Lorac products because they're really such an underrated brand, this being among one of their most underrated products. I used a full pump in that video and while I liked the coverage it gave me, I just was finding it was too much. And so lately, especially with this, that gives my skin a ton of really beautiful slip, I use half a pump, literally that much. And I will take it little by little on a brush, starting in the center of my face, working on the areas where I prefer to have more coverage, where I have redness like around my nose, a tan line from sunglasses. Might not be the best at wearing sunscreen on my morning walks right before I'm getting better, I'm getting better. But because it's a step in my makeup routine, I often forget to wear it right when I pop out of bed and go for a walk first thing in the morning, so. <sighs> I do have a little bit of a sunline, but I apply this starting in the center um, and just look with what little product, how much it evens out 
really naturally evens out the tone on my skin. Even that little sunglasses line. And even though it's a thinner texture, I was kind of worried about how thin and almost watery this texture was in combination with the really slippery skincare that I have on, but it just kind of glides over it. And I think that is what helps me use less of this because it doesn't cling to my dry patches anymore. It just glides over the whole of my skin. I like the way it looks better. It's a little bit more natural looking, more glowy, more dewy. I have finally embraced this dry skin and wouldn't you know it in like two months, it might be gone once I have the baby. <laughs> Go figure. And look, I'm done with my face and I still have quite a bit of product left on the back of my hand. It's just, your skincare makes all the difference, people. Then for concealer, I do love the uh, Pro Soft Focus Longwear Concealer from Lorac, but I noted this in that video. I got a shade that's a little bit too deep for me. It just, it deepens up my under eye area and I really like to keep it like a half shade, full shade lighter, just to keep things nice and bright under there. So I have been using my Huda Beauty, the Overachiever Concealer in the shade Coconut Flakes or 10 N. And while I'm applying this, cause I feel like I've talked about this quite a bit. I mean, for those who might've missed my thoughts on this, it's creamy, rich, but not too rich. It's not gonna sink into fine lines, buildable coverage, brightening, obviously, if you get the, the right shade for you. It's just an all around good concealer. And I love, love, love the metal uh, tip here to disperse it under my under eyes. It's just so soothing. It's like a really nice under eye, cryo treatment when you're doing your makeup. So that's that. While I'm doing this, let's talk about podcasts. One podcast in particular, the one that I cannot stop listening to. Like literally I've been putting off filming this video because I just need to finish up the episode has been something was wrong. And I've talked about that. Where's my brush? I've talked about that podcast here before, I think a couple, a year, maybe two back, because there are a couple of seasons of it at this point. And basically it is a podcast where real people tell their stories about their encounters with liars, manipulators, gaslighters, you know, not just their personal interactions, but how it affected their lives, their family's lives, their friend groups. Like it's, it's a real drama fest. And most of the time you're hearing about it after the fact, like they're reflecting on things that have happened, but all of them are relatively recent. Not that that really matters, but I guess I say that just so you know that there is for the most part, a, a solid conclusion to these. It's not just the exploration of people's relationships with these uh, manipulative and sometimes dangerous people in their lives. There is often a resolution there. And this season in particular is just bananas. Without giving too much away, there are just so many threads to follow in this storyline, just given the number of people that have been affected. And every time something kind of outrageous happens, they keep getting away with it and just it, things pile on more and more. And you're like, when will the madness end? It's fascinating. It's sad. It's frustrating. It's just, I can't stop listening. Something was wrong. Amazing podcast. Oh, and on my brows, I've really been loving this. This has been, is the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Brow Fixer in the shade that I got is medium brown. It has a tiny, teensy tiny little spoolie here. It comes bent and angled like this, but honestly just a little quick kind of manipulation in here and you can straighten it right out depending on what angle you prefer. It's basically a tinted brow gel, but it's a pretty strong hold brow gel. I would put it almost into the pomade category. It is such a strong hold. And for my brows, where I'm looking for a combination of a little bit of fill um, and a little bit of shape, but not not that I need to or, or care to draw in for shape. I just want to shape the brow hairs that I currently have in that direction. And then I want a product that will hold them in that shape. And because this has that hold, it has the tint, it just adds a little bit of everything without being too much effort. You see, and actually I kind of overdid it over here, put a little bit heavied up a little bit too much here in the front. I've actually been considering getting a lighter shade of this to do up here in the front and then take the deeper shade out towards the tail of my brow. But for now, this is all I have been using. And especially when it comes to brows, 
I don't like to work hard. I mean, I don't like to work hard on a lot of things when it comes to my makeup, but brows especially. Anytime I develop some sort of brow routine where it's like multiple steps, like a pencil and then a gel or a pomade or a whatever, like it's very short lived. I really like things that I can just run through my brows and it does it all in one swipe effectively. And so that is what this does for me. It's kind of similar to, I mean, I've used similar products to this, like this one from Revlon, the brow fiber filler I used for the longest time from Revlon. And it has more of like a thicker mascara, sh shorter, but thicker mascara spoolie wand compared to this long, thin guy. And, and the uh, texture of the Revlon product itself is a little bit thicker. It is like closer to a wax or a pomade in terms of its texture. And I find that this one from Makeup Forever, although it is more expensive, uh, is just a little bit thinner. It's easier to run through my brows without bulking them up. I think both the formula and the brush shape helps with that. But overall, I have just found this one to be easier to work with. However, you know, if you want uh, like a drugstore version of this, the Revlon is really good. I just find now that I, now I have the Makeup Forever, it's a little bit easier to use and work with. Okay, for the eyes, I promise I will make this short because I have been talking about these for the past few months in my favorites videos. Um, the Lorac Pro Palettes, the both the Noir and the Soleil. The Noir I'd been loving previously and then I kind of got into the Soleil mood and have really been relying on this. But like I said, I know I have been talking these to death or I feel like I've been talking them to death recently. So if you wanna see more on these, I will link videos that I have done, talked about them, swatch them down below, but just to do something different today. So I don't totally bore you. I am gonna reach for something that's was kind of in the back of my makeup drawer. It's a custom palette from Inglot, which I feel like we haven't seen a lot from them in a very long time, but they make some amazing shadows. And so this is a custom, the, kind of the nice thing about Inglot is you can go pick out your eyeshadow singles, your eyeshadow finishes, and they put them in this nice magnetic streamlined palette. This is nothing new at this point, but I do remember back in the day, this was like, you can do what? Make your own palette, be your own palette boss? I could never. Well, you can. And so that is what I'm going to use today. These, by the way, were, I think almost all, if not almost all of these were given to me, I won them in a contest that I did with Inglot. How did that work? I forget what that contest was. I ended up on a billboard in Times Square though. Like I literally have a picture, it's a digital billboard of like a video of me or a picture of me, I forget. And my dad asked if it was Photoshopped. It was not Photoshopped. I was actually briefly on a billboard for Inglot in Times Square. And this was one of the prizes I got, I think, I'm pretty sure. Anywho, got a prime first. I'm gonna use my MAC Paint Pot in the shade Soft Ochre. You know what I wonder about Inglot is if we haven't heard a lot from them because like so many brands that I feel like had their heyday very early on in beauty YouTube, they kind of haven't done a whole lot to innovate outside of their core products which is not to say they're not doing amazing. I mean, I think they're an artistry brand. I'm sure makeup artists still love and use them. They're, I'm sure, very practical for like an actual working makeup artist. But in terms of getting a lot of airtime here on YouTube, they just haven't. And, and so I do wonder if that's why, if they've kind of shifted their focus or if they just haven't, you know, really bothered to create things that are on, on the buzzworthy side of things. And I think I wanna do a fall look. I'm gonna start with this guy right up here as my crease shade. It's officially September, so you know what that means. It is now fall in the hearts and minds of everyone who wants it to be fall. And who cares if it is still almost 100 degrees here in Texas, I'm going to start wearing sweaters try and stop me. This shade, that is one problem with these being in a magnetized palette. They are kind of harder to get out, so I can't, it's not super easy for me as I'm using these to pop them out and tell you exactly what shade I'm using, but I'll list them all down in the description bar below. But this shade, like I said, it's just going through my crease, swiping it right on through. Okay, I think I messed up. So I also it's kind of dark when I look in my lap. So I think what I accidentally did, I also started mixing this shade in with this shade on this side. So I'm just gonna even it up and just know. Now I'm working with both of those shades in my crease and I'm gonna take that deeper shade 
and start working it into my outer corner. Now I'm gonna take the shimmery cranberry right up here on kind of a smaller domed brush and start pressing that into my outer corner and blending it in. Oh, you know what I should have used? I have the whole Real Techniques Victoria, these are sponges, but I have brushes. Victoria Lynn and Real Techniques brush collection that I should have dug into here. Maybe we'll do a separate video on that. I bought them. I really like Victoria Lynn. You know I love Real Techniques. I have quite a few videos about my favorite brushes from them. Uh, and so I went ahead and got the whole thing and really, really should have used them. But while I'm doing this though, let's talk about another favorite and that is a tiny image printer. Where is it? It is this guy right here, prints pictures that are actually stickers that you can put in your scrapbooks, in your planner. That's what I like them for or have been using them for. I think it's called Life Print. Yeah, there's an LP here up at the front. It's called Life Print and I learned about it from my friend Jessica, who is also Pretty Prints and Paper on Instagram, she used, she showed, she's like literally queen planner, knows the best planners depending on what you use your planner for, how to organize your life, optimize your life, be a better person through your planner. She's your girl to go to. But she showed one of her, I think it was a weekly, either a daily or a weekly planner where she had a picture with her and some friends printed and like stuck inside the planner. And I asked her, is that a sticker? Like it looked like it was a very low profile, flexible sort of sticker that was also a picture. And she said yes. And she told me it was this printer. And I like that because I am great at taking, well, actually I'm not even great at taking digital pictures. I have very few digital pictures and those that I have, I rarely look at because they're on my phone. I don't really have, I'm just so bad at printing them. And I know the disposable cameras and actual film is kind of making a comeback, but I'm too lazy to take things in to get them developed or even have them printed online. So even though she warned me before I got this, the quality, the image quality is not stellar. It really does the job for what I want it to do, which is just kind of printing off those spur of the moment images to kind of remember your life in the moment, whether that's in my daily planner or like I've started doing um, for the baby. I was like, I'm gonna have so many pictures of this baby once he comes and they're all gonna be on my phone and I know I'm not gonna go back and look at them. So that's another reason why I got this. So I could kind of keep a little, you know, family tracker and put little mementos in my daily planner and just really feel like I'm creating and able to have more vivid memories of things as they happen, which is kind of what my planner has been for me. I, in my 2020, I think it was my 2021 favorites, mentioned that the planner that I love using is called Clever Fox because it's more than just an hourly or a weekly planner. It helps you like plot out your life goals who you want to be in the coming year and how you want to grow and change and improve. And um, along with that, I've just found that it's become a really helpful way to remember things that I've done, both, you know, professionally and like in a getting things done kind of way. And also just a, oh, where was I on that day? You know, it's like part planner, part journal. And so I feel like the printer like this is really going to help round that out. And also, you know, I'm sure in the midst of baby chaos. The last thing that I will think about doing or have time to do is go print pictures, even though I might be taking a ton of them. So this will just kind of help me um, make that process more easy anyway. Okay, I think, I think I'm done with this red. Now on an even smaller brush, I'm going to go in with this matte deep purple. It's like a deep aubergine kind of shade. And I'm going to pat that in the outermost part of my corner and maybe drag it in towards like an eyeliner. Oh, the other cool thing about this printer that I didn't even realize until after I had bought it and started using it was the app that you use to print your images also allows you to create or use videos, like print images from videos. And in doing that, when you have the app open and you, it creates like a digital QR code that whenever you hold your phone and the app is open, you hold your phone over that image, the video will play on your phone. So that yes, you might have a static image in your scrapbook or wherever you're putting these images, but when you actually hold your phone over it, you can see the video that is attached to it. And I think it allows you to like edit and piece together videos of multiple pictures. So say you don't have a video, but you have a collage of images that you wanna remember, a weekend by or something, this will play that, you can edit it in there and then it'll play that montage 
of videos for you. And I just, it's not what I bought it for. I don't know how much I'll use it, like take the time to actually do that. But it's a really cool feature that, I mean, it was a $50 printer. There are lots of kind of mobile printers out there that are way more expensive. And so, yeah, the quality is not that great. But for the kind of functionality and the use that I think I'm going to get out of it, I think it's a pretty good deal. And it's really let me go back to like super old pictures, digital pictures that we had that again, like, haven't looked at in years because I had no idea where they were being kept digitally, would never have thought to look there. Like, I, when was when was this? It was in high school at some point, but like Andrew and I went to a dance right there. We've got to be like 15 or something. And I was just like a really, um, Andrew's my husband, by the way, my high school boyfriend, also my husband now. Um, and so it, this is just really cool, you know, memories to be able to go look back at. And now that I have it printed, and in an actual book, it's going to be more accessible to find. Alrighty, those are the eyes. I feel like I have massively underutilized this gorgeous palette, but I want to do a bold lip and that's kind of all. I want to keep the eyes a little bit colorful, but still very minimal. So I'm going to finish this off with some mascara. This is my Makeup Geek Extension Effect Mascara. Uh, it's just, it's really what I have been using a lot of lately. Okay, so lashes are on. Let's now do the rest of the face. Starting with bronzer, this, I'm gonna be real honest, they are all from Lorac. I have still been very into the facial products that I tried and have now continued using from that video. First, starting off with the bronzer, this is the Tantalizer Buildable Bronzing Powder in the shade Sundays. And this one took me by surprise in many ways. First of all, it is warmer than I thought I would like my bronzer, but it doesn't look that warm on the skin, like Oompa Loompa warm, you know what I mean? It's also shimmery, and I kind of didn't think I would like a bronzer any face. Oh, okay, well, when you overdo it like that, it's a bit much, but just, <laughs> hey, let's blend. Let's just quit talking, start blending. When you actually blend, it is like the ultimate golden goddess level bronzer and just a really light touch, obviously, because I kind of overdid it with that first pass. Super light touch just adds the most beautiful glow to your skin. Bronzed, not bronzed, bronzed, not bronzed, love it. Not the worst, but not the best. And it's kind of been making me wonder, have I been wearing my bronzer slash contour shades too cool? Like, have I been making myself look like a corpse instead of a bronzed goddess? Like, what? I don't know. It makes, it really makes me wor worry that if this looks, if this doesn't look nearly as warm as I was afraid of, what did my skin look like when I was putting on, you know, much cooler, much topier facial products? No sense in looking in the past. Let's just love what we have. For the blush, I am going to use the Lorac Color Source Buildable Blush in Aura. It's like a super soft, it looks super pale. I'm not gonna lie, I know. It looks super pale in here, but it's actually a surprisingly pigmented dusty rose sort of shade when you build it up. Like, I mean, I don't wanna build it up too much, but like, I do wanna illustrate just how pigmented it is. Uh, and it's fully matte. It kind of makes me wanna try more shades from them, but I know I just need to use and appreciate what I have. I don't need more blush, but just so you know, it is repeat buy good. It is buy more shades because I love the one I have kind of good in case you are curious and wanting to try. Really, really love that. Then for highlighter, okay. So in that video, I mentioned this highlighter. It's in this rose gold packaging called Light Source Mega Beam Highlighter in Gilded Lily. I love this. Absolutely. It's like a balmy, I know it looks like an absolute disco ball in there, but the way it actually comes off on the skin is like a wet sort of glow. Not quite balmy, more like I literally just got out of the most relaxing shower of my life and this is the natural dew and glow that I have on my skin. I don't know how it does it. I'm not going to ask questions. I don't care that much. I just love what it does to my skin. However, in the comment section of that video, one of you guys recommended these to me. They are the Light Source Illuminating Highlighters as opposed to the Mega Beam Highlighters. Okay. And I got Starlight and Daylight, but to be totally honest, they are identical. I kind of don't know why Lorac d has these two. If you ask me, you can pick one and it's as good as having both of them. Would not recommend picking up both of them, but both are 
really good. You're just gonna end up with a lot of the same or similar looking product if you do. Now this is nice because this is like, it's much more subtle, basically. It still gives you major glowy vibes, like serving big time goddess vibes up in here, but it just does it in a more subtle, lit from within sort of way, if you know what I mean. Like it's blinding, but it's somehow still natural looking. And again, don't know how they do it. Don't know that I want to know in case it implicates me in some magic I don't don't want to be a part of, but I will use it because it is gorgeous. The shade that I'm using, by the way, in case you want this one in particular is Starlight, but I'm telling you, they're both very, very similar. Um, and so yeah, I basically, with this, unlike the other one, I can't really bathe in the other one because it, although it is relatively natural looking, it's not quite as natural looking as this that I can just kind of put willy nilly all over the place. Also, big thanks to the person who recommended that. You're the best. Okay, now last up our lips and I have been waiting to wear this shade for fall, which is not officially, but in my heart it is. This is from NYX. It is one of their Shine Loud liquid lipsticks in the shade Never Basic, I believe. Um, I did a short on this because it's interesting. To me, this looks like a deep brown shade in the tube. And when you layer it up, that is certainly how it comes off. However, the base is actually purple, like plummy purple. So in that short, basically what I showed how to do is, you know, if you put a little bit like this on your lips and you blend it out, it's just this, it's a, still a pretty dramatic, but not as deep purple shade as opposed to this brown shade. And so what what am I doing right now? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna layer it up fully with this eye look. So this is a really fun and surprisingly versatile shade. And a couple of you guys asked me to do, okay, I can't talk, please hold, okay. There we go. A couple of you guys asked me if I could try more shades of this to see if there were any others that had those similar sort of dual properties. Um, but I doubt, I doubt it. Uh, a lot of the other shades that I look at seem pretty straightforward. I just don't know. I, I'd hate to buy a bunch more of these knowing that I probably won't get as much good out of them as I should, um, only to not have them deliver on the same cool feature that this has. The other problem, is that these are really hard to come by. This is, I wanted to try this particular formula, but they, Ulta was like totally sold out of every single shade except for this one and a deep blue, which I almost got, but I got it because liquid lipsticks seem to be making a comeback, but they're doing it in the best way possible with a gloss on the other end of them. So the point of this is not just to have a transfer proof lipstick, which I'm kind of skeptical of this will fully dry because I forgot to wipe off my lip conditioner beforehand. It feels like it's drying down. We will see. But uh, the idea behind these is once this fully dries down, you can go in and apply this ultra glossy lipstick and it will still stay tr transfer proof, which is not a new concept. I remember um, back, I think even before I started my YouTube channel, so over a decade ago, either Revlon or Maybelline, I think it's Revlon, had the exact same format. Like they were a way ahead of the liquid lipstick curve and they still actually have them out to this day. So I got this as well as one shade from that other brand that I'm pretty sure is Revlon, just to see like where have, in the, in the liquid lipstick technology, have we advanced any more? And if so, I could totally get back into liquid lipsticks. I feel like they had gone out of vogue for a while. We were all sick and tired of super dry lips, for the sake of long lasting lipsticks. And now I think they might be making a comeback. And if they come, okay. Wow, yeah. Even over the lip conditioner, totally dried. If they are making a comeback with these glosses, I'm so down. I'm so totally into it. Like look at how gorgeous and high shine this gloss is. It's also just a great clear gloss if you want a clear gloss, but to get to have a transfer proof, glossy, pigmented lipstick that's comfortable, sign me up, sign me up. So that is that shade in Never Basic. The Revlon one is also very good, but this is just a very folly shade that I wanted to wear to ring in fall. I feel like I have, those are my beauty favorites. I feel like I've kind of fallen down on the lifestyle favorites. What else, what else do I have to add? Ooh, shows. Um, 
the one that has made the biggest, I'm sure I've watched a lot, but the one that has been like the best that Andrew and I recently watched is a brand new cherry flavor. And if you're looking to get in the mood for spooky season here coming up, I think it's going to be a good one to watch. It's um, American Horror Story-esque. It's like a mini series. So I think there are eight episodes and you know, it's scary. It's a little campy at times, but the plot itself I think is very, very good and very unique. So um, like I said, if you're into a little bit of the horror genre, you're into getting ready for spooky season, that would be a good way to do it. Um, and besides that, I think that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching this favorites video. As usual, I'd love to hear what you have been loving in the month of July, beauty, fashion, anything else. Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye guys.